to tell you a little bit about Edna. Edna for me is just a really amazing person. Uh, the first time we met, Edna just took to Agile and Scrum. Like it was like a hand in glove, um, you know, and I just felt, well, Edna's already agile, you know, everything she did and she said, you know, was already agile. And so for me, and I've, over the last few years, I've just, you know, and it's been validated, Edna. I mean, what we did in the digital studio in Fidelity Bank and your team and everything else you've been doing since then has just been incredible. So the Scrum Studio that we set up, with, that you set up with your team that we supported, um, the Scrum Studio and the experience in the studio really gave me that, uh, that confidence that you are definitely part of the future of Africa when it comes to transformation. So let me tell you a little bit about Edna. So versatile, accomplished manager, more than 10 years. Okay, you're trying to be like, modest, but this is more than 20 years experience, um, demonstrating the ability to influence diverse cross-functional teams to achieve objectives and meet critical deadlines in fast-paced environments, working in a fast-growing competitive environment where she can exhibit managerial skills towards team and organizational success. Uh, specialities are IT, human resource management, banking, uh, operations, retail banking with a specialty in sales and services, general office administration, and much, much more than that. She's an influencer. Fidelity Bank, I believe, I've, I strongly feel, I know, uh, has definitely benefited from your experience and insight. So Edna, once again, I want to welcome you to Agile in Africa 2022. It's so wonderful to have you here. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nana. When you say all of this, then I'm actually gobsmacked. But I also want to say thank you to the Agile in Africa team for an opportunity, um, another opportunity. I think there's a third time I'm speaking in AIA and um, it's lovely to be part of the movement that is enriching not just our organizations, but Africa. So I am going to put my um, video off and share my screen so okay. we get to it. Okay. <laughs> so as I am trying to share my screen, yes, I just want us all to pause, take a minute, think of our day, mm. right, and what we do in our day, and plan it. Mm. Okay, so I, I believe we all did think, pause, take a minute, and look at what we do. Um, in our day or the task you wanted to do. So in doing that, um, you did it take a minute, you thought through it, am I right? Um, after thinking through it, after thinking through it, you planned and you executed. Then you, you would check if at the end of the day, what you did is really what it is. And if it is, you give yourself a thumbs up. If it's not, you would rethink it and go ahead. And that's the journey most of us go through on a daily, on a daily basis, you know. And that's what I also used to go through before I was agile. I think when I met Nana, he used to call me the Pak Pak Agile Girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after learning all the agile principles, you know, it's really enriched my, um, uh, the way I now achieve my goals. So I currently do manage and juggle all my tasks without pulling out my hair with a smile. So most people think it's really easy, but it's not always that easy. Okay. And, um, and so let's talk about an agile ma'am, an agile ma'am. So a woman wakes up in the morning. She knows that at the end of the day, she wants to give her family dinner by 6 p.m. So she thinks about what they will eat. She makes a grocery list. She checks her, her store to, or her cabinet to check if she has everything going. She does go grocery shopping, you know. Maybe she takes a bit of time, visits the spa, comes back home prepares her meal, checks the taste of her meal. That is her testing her product 
as she tests her products and everything is fine, when the family is ready to eat, she she serves the food. And yay, it's meal time. Everybody enjoys the meal. They hug her at the end of the day. And she goes to bed content because what she set out to do at the beginning of the day was met. The same happens to who I call the agile lion. The agile lion looks for his prey, chases his prey, gets his prey, has his meal, and later he relaxes. Okay. So two days ago, I'm still breaking the ice as we are working on the slides. Two days ago, I happened to watch Cinderella. And something tweaked my imagination during the Cinderella movie. She picked a caterpillar as a pet and she watched it cocoon through the stages from a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. When she was doing that, you know, she always had three mice as her friends and the three mice wanted her to get rid of the caterpillar when it reached the pupa stage because they thought it was not pleasant. But she kept, she kept it all going and it, it eventually became a beautiful butterfly, which in that Cinderella episode metamorphosed into her fairy godmother. And we can just oppose all of this to what is happening in today's economy, which is not always very pleasant. I think IMF reports are stating that there's a projected decline in global growth from an estimated 6.1% this year to 36 in 2023. So I guess that is our pupa stage. Um, inflation is also declining from estimated 7.5 to 2.5 in 2024. Job growth is slowing down. Some companies are becoming tighter. And interesting to note, customers of today are spending more in some areas and cutting back in others. So it just tells us that the world dynamics have changed. And as organizations, we can't rest on our laurels um, or we'll be weeded out. And we don't even want to talk about those that have been weeded out before us. So we must, we certainly must remain relevant. And um, I think he got it. Fantastic. So we must remain relevant. And so this morning, we are going to, if we can go to slide number four, we are going to talk about remaining relevant as an organization. Okay, so we'll go through the, the fantastic, thank you so much. We'll go through Africa because we are talking about agile in Africa. So Africa tends to be the youngest um, continent in the world. We have an average age of about 19.7. 25 is the age 25 downwards, we have 60%, meaning that um, we have a very young population. And in having a very young popula population, we have a lot of opportunities as a continent. If we can kindly go to the... Um, Next slide. It's interesting to know that all in Africa currently, we are experiencing a lot of interest rate hikes, at least in Ghana. The climate changes are affecting us, although we are very rich with resources. And I think to remain relevant, organizations must choose to be optimistic. We need to choose to be optimistic and seeing the glass half full and not half empty. And um, Mind the opportunities, the recession that we find ourselves in currently presents. So what does having such a young, um, next slide please. What does having such a young population really mean to us as organizations and also to our future customers? Okay, thank you very much. So I think from the consumer point of view, we are seeing a lot of people who want to um, leverage on social media. Um, they like social networking, they like influencers, 
you know they don't want too much content they don't want all the long videos all the long um explanations they just want to short and dandy and to the point so those are the kind of customers we are seeing today in the workplaces we are also seeing that um they are very we are very into work life balance collaboration and um, breaking those silos breaking the limits no more um, mr this or sir this and we really want to see a lot more flexi working in our workplaces and most most of the young people today are entrepreneurial and also want to bring that entrepreneurial skill into our organizations next slide please So one of my favorite people in the world is Jeff Bezos. It's not because he's a rich, <laughs> he's a very rich man, but it's also because he has such um, great customer centricity around him. So there's something he said that really always sticks with me that we innovate by starting with the customer and working backwards. So understanding who our customer is, is very critical for all of us as organizations and Sorry, Nana, I keep going, saying go to the next slide, so. That's fine, no problem at all. And sorry to everybody, I keep saying that. So um, we established the fact that the average age, or we have 60% of our population in Africa under the age of 25. So obviously their characteristics have changed. And um, we'll just spend a little time speaking about some of these characteristics we are seeing where they are because, um, so we are seeing that most of the younger people are now looking at sustainability. And sorry, I'll use IKEA that is in America as an example, where they have looked at sustainability to ensure that their whole value chain from when where they buy their products to when they put it on the shelf, they all follow sustainability or they don't use them. And I think we are getting there in Africa. So we need to start to realize that we are interested in what, what we are eating, whether it's been, it's been produced environmentally friendly. So we need to look at that. It's very interesting to realize that a lot of our um, customers today do like influencers, do want us to use influencers for our brand and that speaks to them more. And I think we're seeing a lot of that in Ghana and in Africa today. We are also seeing that um, our customers want their product now. So if I come to you now and you don't have it, I'll go to the next person because they can afford to research and to find alternatives. So we need to keep that also in mind. And they are very opinionated. They know exactly what they want. They want to feel special. They want you to know that they are supreme. They want you to personalize what um, you give to them. And above all, they want to reach you 24 seven. They are not here to take any excuses as to, um, unfortunately we cannot get there or we don't have this or we can, you cannot be reached. So to the next slide. So I think most of our customers in understanding the use today, um, we have to understand the kind of channels um, these customers leverage and their experience. Uh -huh. Yes, the next Sorry. slide. Uh, yeah, I can keep going, but then you, you, it's now fixed. So you can actually share. Directly. Oh, I can I, share? Yeah. So you can try it one more time and it might be easier for you. Um, I think it's more of I have... Security, security feature yes, that's not allowing me to share ah that's okay then i'll carry on that's fine thank you so much nana i appreciate pleasure. you pleasure, so, pleasure. <laughs> a lot of our customers are looking at mobile apps chatbots e-commerce and we're seeing a lot of e-commerce especially in ghana and so proud to know a lot of women are into e-commerce today so it's empowering more more ladies you know um you see a lot on social media and our customers expectations today are they want instant access all the time they want you to personalize so they just don't want 
to log on and you don't say good morning to them or hello to them. And you don't send them stuff that um, makes them feel like they're part of it. Another thing is they love loyalty programs. In fact, we all love loyalty programs where we know that if I'm working with you, I'm going to get something out of it. So if you're, if you're um, using my money to grow, you're also using giving me a perk to grow. And we are very price sensitive. And the reason we see, and I'm saying we because I'm also a customer, the reason we see that a lot is because we have so much information out there to glean and to leverage on, you know. And apart from that, we want to see a lot of empathy where we work with you. So Nana, sorry, the next slide. So although we are in Africa, we'll have to talk about the world just a little bit because we are about 16.7% of the world's population. So we do have a huge say in the world. Okay, so we just, or we are just coming out of the pandemic or the critical part of the pandemic because we seem to still see some waves of the pandemic still happening. Um, we have gone through the industrial revolutions, we are in the digital revolution where we can leverage on a lot of digital um, offerings out there to ensure we, our businesses are growing. Um, also in the world, we are seeing, we've already talked about recession and stuff, so we will not go there. But we are seeing some companies that are doing extremely well in the world. We are we are loving Amazon. Um, I know people have queued for the I, new iPhone 14. It's not even ready for people to have. Um, Airbnb, we are going into it. We are loving Netflix. We are normally on Twitter. So we are seeing all of these organizations that have, are making it and it's interesting when you go into the what they do and what you delve into it you realize that they are agile they're customer centric and very innovative organizations so these are some of the things that as Africa we can learn from next slide please and I would say that we would realize also in Africa the potential is so big so Akinwe Adisina um, who is the president of African Development Bank said that we have to be impatient in moving Africa forward. We can't have the laid back attitude any longer. Um, we've seen a lot in our mobile um, industry where we've seen a lot more people using smartphones. So that tells us as businesses that um, we can leverage that to ensure that we are reaching our customer. We have also seen a growth in um, broadband and internet connectivity. So we know that um, we are more linked than we know. I, I, I don't know, I want you to pause and ask yourself if you're like me that does not remember the last time they asked for directions because today all they need to do is to go to the map and, and they are where they are going to. So that just tells you how already we are all leveraging on these um, on these practices to drive efficiency in our businesses and even see the public sector also beginning to look at agile i do remember when i met nana in the beginning he was working with ghana police and ghana police had this whole project and program on how they can become more agile in the way they deliver um, police services and i see that there's been a vast improvement i mean they are still work in progress, but the great, great improvement. And we're seeing a lot of the informal sectors also moving into, main, into the mainstream economy. So money is coming into the banks just because we um, are coming up with products and services to ensure that they can leverage on using it. So I think it's breaking that myth of where people thought it was better to keep your money under your pillow. And we, the, there's also a lot going on in the healthcare system. And so work is going on. So there's so much potential. Apart from that, God has blessed Africa with 
so much raw materials. And all we need is the great ideas to innovate around it, to leverage it. Next slide, please. So we looked at the world and some of the people who have disrupted, and I tend to be in the financial institution, so industry. So I will talk about the financial industry um, as the disruptors that I'm very comfortable with. And I'm sure with everybody, you have seen my, um, some disruptors. So. It's interesting, we're seeing a lot of digital banks coming up in Africa, um, but mainly in Nigeria and in South Africa. And we're seeing that the mobile and mobile money, MTN, is, is bigger than a lot of banks. We have a lot in Nigeria. But the beautiful thing, and I mean, one of, one of that also came out of our Scrum Studio, is the, it's WhatsApp banking. We're seeing WhatsApp banking becoming a form of banking in Africa today where we tend to interact with our bank from uh, WhatsApp, which everybody has or most people have. So making it easy. So there's so much potential in Africa and there's so much happening in Africa. So how do we as individuals and organizations take it to the next level? I'll be most grateful if Nana can go to the next slide. So another person I like is Winston Churchill, but the part of his quote I love is that an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. I think that is what we see all the time in life, difficult situations, but we need to be optimistic. So to the next slide. So how do we become optimistic in this volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world we find ourselves. Change is inevitable and we have the chance to do that. So um, we're going to now talk about how we can change and transform in, um, for our organizations to become relevant. Um, I think we've talked about quite a lot and the reason we talked about it, yes, we can go to the next slide. We talked about it is to build a platform on why the change is inevitable because we need to grow, we need to sustain our businesses and we need to be relevant. Next slide, please. So why is change so, so important? I think we are seeing that in the world of technology, there's so much happening and there's so much to leverage on. And we have younger population and this younger population is growing. You know, so their customer needs are going to grow accordingly. Um, the global economy has its issues and an Africa economy is not left out. So we need to also adapt because of the changes that are happening there. And I believe that um, we are all individual brands and we don't, we don't live in a box. We live out of the box. We are always changing our status quo and also as organizations and as a country and as Africa, we need to change our status quo because there are a lot of growth opportunities out there. Next slide, please. Normally when we talk about transforming, uh, most people think about processes, most people think about technology, but I believe that the first and foremost thing is the culture and the mindset. Because um, if we don't change our mindsets, there's no way we can begin to learn the, and learn the old ways or our bad, the habits that are not really working in today's world and changing and also um, freezing those new um, things we learn. And I see a lot of organizations tend to invest in skill set training in, um, and we invest very little in behavioral training. And I think it's very critical as growing organizations that um, because our people are the pivot for every transformation, every change, every change of work, we need to first work on the mindset and we need to make that deliberate effort to work on the mindset. Um, so the next slide. Um, we also have to become very customer centric because when we looked at 
those who were making such inroads. One thing I said is if we study what they do, they are very innovative. They are very customer centric. And just like Jeff Bezos says, we need to understand our customer before we even build our product, you know. So every organization of today needs to come up with a strategy around their customer, you know, a voice of the customer strategy, which um, all the companies that are doing very well and making inroads do tend to have. So we all have a clear vision. We'll have, um, we'll have a lot of listening and learning. So in listening and learning, we come up with surveys, we come up with focus groups, we come up with live charts, we see how they, they work, they use our channels and glean how they are working, you know, that we align to it and that we begin to build in an iterative manner. Like you did, um, I'm sure when we did the pause and think about something. And the benefits we begin to see as uh, organizations is we'll be, seeing, we'll be seeing some growth coming up. We'll be seeing a lot more clarity in what we are achieving as organizations, because I think a lot of organizations today have a lot of work, 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 but, um, measuring the achievements is not as simple as it should it would have been but with becoming more centric or customer centric we know the goals we have and we are working towards the goals we would build a deeper relationship with our customers meaning we are going to preempt what our customers want to see and ensure that they get it or even offer it to them before they even think about getting it so that's the kind of organizations we need to start building which is very critical next um slide please nana um a very critical one too is an innovative environment we want to see more of test and learning in our environments cross-functional teams working on in iterations and i say that because some may argue that why not waterfall and I believe in waterfall, but I also believe that the world is changing so um, quickly that to have a first mover advantage, you need to start looking at um, coming up with things iteratively so you learn from what the customer is doing and improve on it. Um, we have to reward innovation in our organizations. Um, we have to come up with a strategy to manage, manage our self-organizing teams and rewarding them and have a lot of brainstorming sessions and begin to break our bureaucratic organizational structure so we become flatter and which makes us all collaborate. And the interesting thing is that that is what our new workforce actually thrives in. So once we don't create these innovative an innovative environment in our organizations, the workforce, the younger workforce is going to leave us. And in leaving us, then we, we, we tend to become irrelevant. So this is very critical for us to keep them engaged and keep them coming up with ideas because they're also very entrepreneurial. So because they are very entrepreneurial, they are very innovative and they want to be head. And we need to give that opportunity because out of a lot of those innovations uh, is the way that a customer can or an organization will understand the customer better and meet that customer's need because that's why we really are organizations to remain relevant so uh, next slide please so we talked about i think a part, part of the theme was to do with business as usual okay so i think business as usual should not change but we need to improve our business as usual. So in our business as usual, we can now, now we can talk agile, we can come up with team, uh, or our teams should be agile teams where we can now come up with Kanban boards, set up what we are doing for the week, go through whatever we are doing for the week. Everybody tells us the task they are doing. And in doing that, what we will realize as organizations is, I may have an impediment or I may face a, um, a problem, but somebody else has already faced it. So during that 
meeting or the meeting where we'll meet probably once a week to go through what we are doing, I can actually help you. So it makes us more effective as teams and more efficient as teams. And at the end of the day, everybody knows that this team is working on this and we'll come and report on it. And then we know the next thing we are doing. So we can't now sit there as line managers and say we don't even know what is happening in our teams because there's a lot more transparency in everything we're doing. And that also speaks well into how we will manage performance because everybody knows what is going on. And we cannot take innovation out. So if we want a hybrid system, we can now have our cross-functional teams, our programs, our scrum studios, coming up with the innovative stuff and using um, some of the stuff from other places or employees to ensure this is happening. Next slide, okay. Okay, so how do we manage change? Because um, change is inevitable, but if it is not managed properly, most of our organizations are going to suffer. You know, communication, 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 communication. You can't be little communication in any change. We have to have a good communication plan, not for our external customer, but for our internal customer, which is our employees. We need to ensure that they know where we are at every time. We are all we are all running with the same message. Okay. And leadership cannot continue to talk. They need to walk the talk. They need to be part of the change. Because if I see my leader is changing, the probability that I would want to change is extremely high. But if I see my leader just talks about change and doesn't make the um, effort to change, uh, it will be difficult for me to also do the same. Um, another great thing to have are dedicated champions in your, in your organization and normally choose the people who are already running with the change. Make them your champions and let them preach the message for you. It also, uh, because you bring that down to everybody's level, it makes everyone feel part of it and you can draw more people with you and always have a living strategy document. And I say a living document because it cannot be static. Change is inevitable. It is the only thing that is constant in life. And so that, that strategy document will see some changes happening to it. Um, next slide, please. And we should always know, ensure that we know who our stakeholders are and um, we are meeting the needs of our stakeholders. Steve Jobs of Blessed Memory says that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. So we are seeing that everyone who has done some, um, something extraordinary, every organization keeps on saying that we have to look at the customer's experience before we look at our processes, before we look at technology. And I just wanted to remind us of that again. Next um, slide. I know I'm about running out of time. So next slide, please. So I think this is an agile. Um, we are all agile. We are all agile. So just to ensure that we've talked about using the agile methodology. So we'll use the agile methodology. We talked about transparency, visibility. We'll see much more. We'll see a lot of teamwork. We'll see uh, individuals um, enjoying that they, they are being given the opportunity and they're empowered. So we'll see an increase in productivity. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so when we talked about BAU, right, and also that also goes with our innovative aspect, continuous improvement is the ultimate goal for all of us so that we can continuously increase our customer satisfaction. So we have to continually improve our systems. We have to look at our cost levels. We have to look at how we reduce waste, and especially in the economy right now, every organization is thinking about how to decrease their cost or to be more efficient. Because if you are not efficient, the, you can have the best product, product and services, but you still be weeded out because you don't have sustainability. Um, we see a lot more of employees 
satisfaction. I know now we have the employee um, value proposition, which is really important in today's world. So we are looking at all of that under continuous improvement. And the important part is in doing all of this, we tend to improve the quality of our product and our service to our customer. Next slide, please. So what are the characteristics? So you, I'm sure you're sitting there and asking yourself, so is my organization really going the agile way? Um, what are some of the characteristics we can see as leaders um, to ensure that we are also part of the change or part of being relevant? You, you begin to see that because you are putting all these things in place, you see a reduced cost to serve, you see an enhanced business, and revenue growth, you become more customer centric because that's the most important aspect to you. And it's no more us thinking we know what the customer needs, but in coming up with ways to always hear the customer's voice to ensure we are giving the customer what they need. And also we see a lot of innovation. We begin to see flatter organizations, flexibility, work-life balance, transparency in the stuff we do. And the important um, asset for us in our organizations, which is our staff, will begin to see that they are more engaged with us because they feel like they are part of the vision, they are part of it, and they are giving out their best. And I think the next slide. So in conclusion, in conclusion, to remain relevant in this fast-paced digital world, we don't have a choice but to continually transform and change but do not forget you have to be where your people are meaning you have to be where your customers are know your customers both internal and external let us not just know our external customers let's ensure we know and understand our internal customers and understand the way they want to be connected and be there with them where they want to be connected and we would not just listen to you or tell you what we have, but we ensure that, let's ensure that we engage our customers and our, both our internal and external customers. Um, never forget that we're in a competitive world. So if I don't do it quickly, someone else will do it and have the first mover advantage. We should not forget the trends and we should be uh, organizations that continually continuously embrace innovation and I think the most important uh, one thing we didn't talk about is we are seeing a lot of cross-industry collaborations especially in the financial institution where you're seeing a lot with the fintechs with the insurances so um, I think we're seeing more marketplaces as part of um, offerings that our customers want. They want to come to a one-stop shop. You know, in the old, in, in, in a couple of years before, you want to go to a department store because you want to buy everything in the department store. That is the same thing the customer wants to see online. That's the same the thing the customer wants to see in the social cycle, that you have everything in one place and be a one-stop shop. Thank you very much. Edna, Edna. Please join me and give Edna a massive, I mean, you could just, uh, we're not even gonna go into like, just look at the chats and you can see all of the positive feedback and what people have been saying and comments and people connecting to your message. Edna, I keep saying it, I don't think you need to do any more certifications, right? <laughs> it's in your DNA, honestly. It's in your DNA. And I, I think someone earlier said that they loved your take on mum, you know, the agile mum, uh, you know, sort of uh, analogy. So I, I really, really feel inspired because your take on youths, you know, I am so much into this. Your take on young people. 
you know, the continent with the youngest population in the world, under 25, you know, like millions. And imagine that energy. And so you're taking you to the tech space, the focus of customer. You know, I love that. And then this flat, you know, taking out the bureaucratic organization, the big boss mentality, you know, we've got to deal with that stuff in Africa, you know. We do, we do, we do. And bring it into Accra, Ghana. You know, there's going to be some mindset, some work to be done. There needs to be some change. And so I love the take on the flat organization, managing change, communication, and the, your take on communication, you know, communicate, communicate, communicate. And one of my biggest things that I talk about, and I think maybe even like uh, I'm sure politically and organizationally across the industries, uh, people will... Uh, you know, they do, they do feel a little bit aggrieved occasionally when I have a go, because I said, I say that they have to lead by example. You can't say, go and be agile. Yeah. And you're not doing it. And you're not, in, you know, you're not imbibing the values. And it's not about the practices or the events and all of these wonderful ceremonies. No, it's the values in your heart. You know, so when you talked about leading by example, I love that, you know, be where the people are. I love that. Edna, again and again and again, I keep on saying this. I know it sounds like a broken record. It's in your DNA. And I am so glad. I am so glad. I, I hope um, you can uh, keep sharing your thoughts with us on the Agile in Africa platform on social media because people need to hear this stuff. You know, Zainab from Nigeria, she just loved, you know, your take on stuff. Look, you can just read the chat. I don't think I need I to say. I will do that. <laughs> you know, it's it's buzzing. It's the chat is just buzzing. I think it's time for us to talk about transformation from a more practical, human centered approach. And so, looking at young people, looking at the energy in the tech space, looking at the new type of organizations that we want, and this new African personality that we want to see. I think you're just absolutely spot on. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Big massive. Thank so, you very much for the opportunity. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much, Nana. Thank you. Ah, Edna. So I don't know if anyone has uh, any, any questions. You want to pop them in the chat. Edna will respond. Uh, please pop. Yeah. Oh, Valerie, it's okay. Glad to see you. Please pop any questions you have into the chat and Edna will take them. She'll go through the questions. If you want to connect with Edna as well, she's on social media, on LinkedIn. You can connect with Edna and she's doing amazing work. I mean, like, Edna, do you remember how the chairman of the bank or the, or the, the group MD of the bank said he was completely blown away by your Scrum Studio, yeah. um, the digital Scrum Studio, because it took two years to get a product out the door in the bank. And you and your team, with our support, you guys did it in less than three months. Yes, yes. And he was, he was like completely blown away. And how did you guys do it? You brought all the people from audits, from marketing, from into the same room. Yes. And there you go. So I think there's a lot people can learn from this. Edna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much, Nana. Please thank take you very much. As these well questions. Africa. Uh, oh, Samuel and some other people are asking for your uh, LinkedIn contact. So please take any questions in the chat. I and will then do we'll that. Come back to you. I, I hope you're going to stay with us for a little while. Unfortunately, I'm actually. Oh, no, no. You might yeah. tap in later. That's okay. I'm